Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to do a quick podcast on covert narcissists and how they do not, how they can't communicate. All right. A lot of people, when they get involved with a covert narcissist, they don't even realize that they're dealing with a covert narcissist. They just feel like, okay, I'm dealing with somebody that's difficult. You know, maybe you make excuses for the person. You feel like, oh, they had a rough childhood. You know, they don't know how to communicate or something like that. First of all, let me just say one thing. A narcissist is not stupid. They're very aware of what they do, okay? They're very shifty in their own way. It's their survival. That's their survival mode is why they do all this kind of manipulation is to survive, all right? These narcissists, okay, they have a genetic predisposition to the personality they are compounded by their environment in their childhood, whether they came from a toxic childhood, um, toxic parents that put them down, didn't validate them, they felt like they had little self-worth, or they were the golden child that felt entitled and could do whatever they want. But the thing is, when you deal with a covert narcissist, all right, a covert narcissist cannot communicate directly. That's why they're passive aggressive, okay? A covert narcissist is like a wounded child that is afraid to be direct. They're afraid of shame. This is why they have to do things in a passive aggressive manner because they're afraid if they're direct with you and you come back at them, they can't handle it, okay? Fragile, fragile egos. And covert narcissists are very jealous people. They're very envious people, but they'll never let you know that they're jealous, okay? They hold everything inside. Covert narcissists hold their feelings inside and don't express to you what's really going on in their mind. You could sit there and try to have a heart-to-heart with a covert narcissist, and they can be, you know, they could open up a little bit, but they always have a wall up. This is why you can never be close with a covert narcissist. A, a covert narcissist will never make themselves completely vulnerable to you, okay? Even if you're showing vulnerability to them, they may open up a little bit, but they always hold back. There's always that wall. And why is that? Because a covert narcissist has no trust, okay? They don't trust people. They don't trust themselves, but they're afraid to show it. They're, they're very, very afraid, you guys, okay? So if you get involved in a relationship with a covert narcissist, some of the things that they'll do is they'll give you the silent routine. This is how they shut it down. When you confront them about something, they're going to stonewall you. They're going to walk out of that room and they're going to let time go by. Okay. Cause they're hoping that you forget about the argument. They don't want to talk about it because they can't face shame. So they have to shut it down. They'll hang up the phone if you're on the phone with them and you confront them about something. They'll go no contact for a while. And then what happens? Then the narcissist comes back and they don't want to talk about the problem. They ignore it. They bring up other things because they just can't face it. And you have to say to yourself, okay, I'm never going to get this person to be able to, you know, face, face the problem and everything. This is who they are. I already know by their actions that they're facing shame and they can't have a conversation about it. Okay. But this makes a relationship difficult because you're, you're never going to be able to be heart to heart with that person because they can't own when they do something wrong. All right. They also use passive aggressive behavior to get out of things, all right? Like in other words, or to pay you back rather. They'll they'll go silent at a party. They'll they'll make you think everything is all right and then they'll do other things to be passive aggressive. They may show up late when they know they're supposed to be somewhere. You know, they may uh smile and everything and and put on a fake act that everything's all right but you know deep down there's something there 
There's something you always when you deal with a covert narcissist, you always feel like something's not right. And when you try to sit there and communicate with them and say, you know, is there a problem or something? A covert narcissist will say, no, there's no problem. No, everything's great. Everything's great. But then they'll they'll be moments of silence. OK, and they'll just say they'll make excuses. I'm tired. Um, you know, I have to do this. They, the covert narcissists love to make excuses. All right. This is how they don't face things. This is how they deflect. So it's, it's impossible when you're in a relationship with a covert narcissist, because you're going to feel very much alone with that covert narcissist. You're going to feel like you're in a relationship by yourself because this covert narcissist is not on your team. They may be there in body, but in mind, they're not completely with you. You always feel like something's missing, all right? You're always sitting there prodding, prodding, prodding to see what's on that covert narcissist's mind. And this is the worst thing you can do with a covert narcissist is to beg. Is there something wrong? Uh, you seem quiet. What's the problem? Then what they're going to do is a covert narcissist is going to cause reactive abuse. Because if you push a covert narcissist too much to get them to be transparent, they're going to agitate you to the point where you explode, okay? They're going to make you explode because they're going to come back at you and say, I don't have a problem. You're the one with the problem. And then they're going to go to all the outside people, the friends, the family, the flying monkeys, and they're going to say, you're overly sensitive because they were quiet, because, you know, they weren't affectionate, they weren't kind, you know, you're just hyper critical, you're hypersensitive, you're negative, it's always you, you have mental problems and everything like that, there's nothing wrong with them, everything's great, but meanwhile, you're living in a cold environment, a covert narcissist is cold, all right, and the thing is, what confuses people is there might be moments where that covert narcissist can show you kindness or niceness, but then there's those cold moments, all right? And you're saying to yourself, well, they were just nice before. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. It was an act, okay? Because something was obviously bothering them and they're not opening up and telling you. That's why they're running hot and cold with you because they don't want to tell you something. They love to use the excuse too, it, um, oh, I didn't want to tell you because I was afraid of how you would react, okay? That is an excuse. That is an excuse. Covert narcissists are very sneaky, all right? They want you to suffer. When they have an argument with you, they want their way of fighting is to fight you fight you in silence, okay? That's why they have periods of silence or when you try to talk to them, they're dismissive, they won't make eye contact, they could roll their eyes, all right? They're always going to like, they're never gonna validate you. A covert narcissist is never gonna validate you because to validate you puts you up on a pedestal and they don't wanna raise you up. They wanna hold you down without being obvious about it, okay? They don't want you to know that they're, you know, angry at you or something like that. So they put on that fake act like everything's okay, but you feel it, you guys. You're gonna feel it in your gut that something's not right. And so many people, I went through this, okay? For many years, I always thought like, well, what's the problem? I tried to talk to my ex about it. You know, there were moments of silence and stuff like that. And I'd hear, oh, nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong. I don't have a problem, this and that. You know, uh, covert, narcissistic mother-in-law, you try to confront them. Oh, is there a problem? No, there's no problem. This is what covert narcissists do, okay? They deny, deny, deny there's a problem. And then if you confront them about it, they say, oh, you're the, you're, you're the problem. Oh, you're making an issue out of nothing. When you know deep down that something's not right, you can feel when somebody's with you and when there's not. It's like I say, you know, real knows real, all right? So you've got to trust your gut. If you're dealing with somebody and, you know, 
they they can communicate on the surface. This is what covert narcissists do. They love to communicate on the surface, the weather, you know, everyday things. But when it comes to talking about real feelings, real emotions, what bothers them or anything like that, they're not going to open up too much. And you know why? Because they don't trust you. They don't trust you. So the thing is, what do you do in a situation like this? You don't beg them to open up because you're not going to get anywhere and you're going to lose your power. You're going to look weak by begging a covert narcissist. This is what they want you to do. They want you to beg for their attention. That's why they give you the silent routine and everything like that. They want you to keep coming up to them and say, can we talk? Can we talk? And they sit there and they're laughing at you under their breath because they're saying you're weak. You can't handle the fact that I'm not talking to you. Don't do it. Don't give in to them. If they want to go silent, let them go silent, okay? But the thing is, don't always be so uh, there for them when they come back, okay? Like, let them know. If you're going to treat me a certain way, guess what? When you want to open up and you want to communicate, I might not be ready to communicate with you. You do it on your own terms when you deal with a covert narcissist. But you guys, it's like I say, when you deal with these narcissists, you're not dealing with your average Joe, okay, where you could sit down and you could really talk about things and you could open up and everything like that. A narcissist, remember this when I tell you it's so true, a narcissist doesn't trust anybody. So you will never get that transparency from a narcissist. And you have to trust your gut if you're dealing with somebody and you feel like there's something wrong, okay? They're communicating, but I feel like they're not really with me, okay? And some people get fooled. Some people feel like they believe the narcissist act when the narcissist gives them that phony, you know, um, communication that, oh, yeah, no, everything's great and everything like that. You've got to look at their actions, all right? You've got to look at how much they make you a priority or if they look like they could they could take or leave you, all right? You're going to know by somebody's actions because when you text them, they're going to they're not going to wait 4 hours later to text you back or the next day. They're going to value you. How somebody treats you is how much they value you, not what comes out of somebody's mouth. I you guys, I'm going to put a plaque on the wall. I swear, I really am and tell you, do not go by what comes out of people's mouths. People lie all the time or they can't tell you how they really feel. You've got to look at their actions. And here's another thing about a covert narcissist. A covert narcissist is there for you, but they're not there for you. They're there for you when they want to be there for you, but they're not your ride or die. Believe me when I tell you, because a lot of times when people are dealing with covert narcissists and somebody gets sick, that covert narcissist is not going to want to deal with it. They're not going to want to be burdened. And I've heard this numerous times by a lot of people, and I've seen it myself. You know, when the going gets tough, that's when the covert narcissist gets going because they just don't want to deal with it. And they're going to be the first ones to ghost you when you're having a real problem because they don't want to deal with it. Unless it's in the very beginning of the relationship and everything's real new, okay? This is how they fool you in the beginning of the relationship. They're they're very, very, you know nice. They're kind. A lot of people are fooled. They think, oh, this person has shown me so much empathy when they heard my mother was sick or something like that. When was that? The beginning of the relationship? How are they after three to six months? Are they still showing you that empathy? See, you can't judge somebody by the first three months because everybody's on their best behavior. It's a slow grind, you guys, to see what somebody's about. The way you're going to know what somebody's about is when you have a fight with them. You've got to see how that that person fights. How does that covert narcissist fight? And we know that covert narcissists don't like confrontation. That's why they walk out. That's why they do the silent treatment. They can't face when you, you come at them head on, okay? And in some cases, they may, you know, most of the time, they're going to dodge out on you, okay? 
But if you really got their back on the wall, they're going to strike back and they're going to be wicked with it. So you've got to, when you, whenever you're dating somebody or you're in a relationship with somebody or you're thinking about getting serious with somebody, you've got to see how does that person deal with confrontation? How does that person deal with arguments? Okay. Are they able to sit down and resolve conflict and when you're dealing with a narcissist, they will never be able to resolve conflict unless they want something else out of you. They may, you know, pretend that they want to, but they really don't. And this is what happens a lot of times when you go to uh, marriage counseling with a narcissist. It never works, okay? It, I'm telling you, because number one, a narcissist never feels like there's anything wrong with them. And if they're going to the marriage counselor, it's because they have their back against the wall and maybe they don't want to lose their kids or their money or their house. So they'll say, oh yeah, okay, I'll go to marriage counseling. Oh yeah, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change, okay? And what's the first thing they do in marriage counseling? They manipulate the therapist, all right? They play the victim to the therapist. They do this in divorce court as well. They play the victim. You're the bad guy. You're nitpicking. You know, you got a problem. You have a problem with everything. This is what a covert narcissist wants you to make you out to be. They want to make you out to be a nut, all right? And that's why a lot of people feel like they're going crazy and they sit there and they self-doubt themselves and say, maybe I'm the one with the problem. Because what a covert narcissist does is they're going to say, you're the problem. Well, all narcissists do this. They say, you're the problem. That's the first thing they're going to do is flip that blame, deflect off them. They're going to call you the narcissist. They're going to call you crazy. They're going to say you have trust issues, you have mental issues. And you know what else they're going to do? You know what else they're going to do? They're going to get everybody around you and around them to side with them. They're going to butter up all the outsiders, all the friends, all the families. They're going to butter up all the outsiders, play the victim, and then they're going to make you look bad. This is what they do. This is how they gang up on you, all right? Because a covert narcissist uses outsiders as their power against you. This is why you'll see them always, you know, kissing up to everybody around them, all right? It's to, to give them power and more people against you so it invalidates you, all right? You got to be aware of these people. That's why they're such snakes. They're such snakes, and you've got to distance yourself from these people because they'll do nothing but try to hurt you, all right? So remember, when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, you have to just accept the fact that, you know what? You're never, ever going to get to that, that covert narcissist soul. You're never going to get to that covert narcissist soul. They will never, ever open up like that. So it is what it is. And if you can get away from it, you get away from it. And if they pull their nonsense or whatever, you just gray rock the hell out of them. And you don't show them no emotion. You don't beg nothing, all right, until you figure out how you're going to get out of that situation so that you don't have to live your life with these mind games, okay? I hope that helps you. If it did, please hit the subscribe.